welcome back to my channel it's your girl Linda here coming back to you with another video today's video I am going to be talking to you about how to reduce visual clutter visual clutter in simple ways I can define it by those things that are not where they are supposed to be in a space and because of that they can be distracting to the eye have you ever been into a space that by all definition is clean but there's just something wrong with it things don't seem to be in the right order that is what i call visual clutter it's those distractions that distract the eye our eyes love order if there is no order our eyes are quick to feed back that into our brain and it doesn't feel right now before we get into the video i just want to say to those who are new to the channel welcome and to those who've been with me all along again welcome i am intending to be sharing with you minimalism videos with that in mind it i'll be focusing more on intentional living and slow living if that sounds interesting to you be sure to hit that like button subscribe and turn on your notification bells so you can join me in another video my number one tip find a home for everything think boxes baskets chest of drawers or any way that you can hide the essentials that you need on a day-to-day -day basis remember here we are not talking of throwing away things, we are talking of storing things in the right of places. Make containers your best friends in your home towards decluttering as they can help you keep your stuff together. Honestly, baskets are my friends. Little baskets, big baskets, anything really that I can use to hide away the clutter. Personally, I find it a pain when I just see shoes, blankets, things lying around everywhere. In my living room, I have this big basket. I mean, it's not humongous, but it's big enough to carry all my throws and all the blankets I use, particularly in the evening and in the winter. Reducing visual clutter can help us create a beautiful and even more attractive space. The next tip is to clear your countertops. Clear your countertops, dish towels, toasters, washing liquids, also useless colorful gadgets if you can help it. This will really, really add to the simplification and decluttering of the space, aiding to the clutter-free zones. I'm talking kitchen countertops, bathroom countertops, or any working, working tops that you may have in your home. Because these are spaces that can really carry a lot of clutter. If you are like me, you know, if you, are, if you don't live by yourself and you do have a family, I would advise that maybe if you can be doing this regularly, clearing up your countertops, it is so good it helps your eye to travel in a place and i really appreciate a space without getting distracted so if you are like me i love toast i love my kitchen gadgets you know all that stuff but try and make it a habit to put it away after every single use you will thank me for it it will really help with reducing the visual clutter in your space the next tip is to be very very aware of your skin colors or theme colors some may say too much color and if it's not put in order can be visually distracting so I know I'm not talking of all neutrals here you can be a person who loves color but just be aware of how you organize your stuff and how you coordinate the colors so for myself i do have a fairly neutral home but my son's bedroom 
I would say it's quite colorful, but what I've tried to do in there is to coordinate colors. And I mean, to take not to take all rainbow colors, but I have chosen some colors that I think they go together. And in that, it's been really, really nice to look at once I've tidied up the place because it's not visually cluttered by color. So yeah, you don't have to be all white and black person. You can be colorful, but just try to put some order into that. Put some thought as you be coming up with skin colors of your home. The next tip is be wary, be careful of word signs. You know what I'm talking about. Live, love, I don't know, all those words. Believe you me, in themselves, those um, inspirational quotes are not bad at all. I think it's just a matter of editing them down and maybe putting a few in a room or maybe not at all completely. Myself, I used to have word signs everywhere in my home. Since I've learned um, what visual clutter is and how distracting those word signs were to my eyes, I decided to get rid of them. But if you are still interested in word signs, just try to edge them and maybe eliminate them, you know, useless. I find pictures or art better because with that, you can really color coordinate it to what you already have in your space and it can actually create a serene and easy to look at space. With word signs, that can be hard because our brain will be trying to compute that information and it can be information overload at times. So yeah, think twice when it comes to word signs. The next tip is to straighten things up. This can be cushions on the sofa, can be picture frames, can be any wall hangings. If things are a bit wonky, you know, it is very distracting to the eye and that's the visual clutter we are talking about. So take five, 10 minutes of your time from time to time to just look around your space, see everything is as it should be, hanging well and straight. And yes, by that you will achieve a clutter-free zone and you would have created a serene space for yourself really. The next tip is Think carefully how you organize your decor. I have learned that our eyes love odd numbers. So three, seven, like that, is the best way to organize your decor. By this, I mean things like vases, things like books. You know, when you are creating your vignettes, it will be best if you can organize them in threes. This will really, really reduce visual clutter in that our eyes always favor odd numbers. This could be three pictures hanging on the wall. It could be those vignettes that we create on our coffee table. For myself, I do have these groupings of three dotted around everywhere in my home and I love it because it is just right. It's not distracting to the eye. Try it. The next tip is hiding codes. I know, I know, codes, wires are everywhere in today's living. Because I mean, name it, we need a code for it. We need a charge for it. Our phones, our home tech, our gadgets, everything really. But this can also make it difficult for us to recognize Clara that these codes can cause. So my tip will be to really take some time, walk around your space, see if you can put some of these wires away. Again, you can put them in baskets, little baskets, or just create homes for them. That will be really helpful in reducing visual clutter. For me, cords are the number one visually distracting things in my home. So from time to time, I try and eliminate them or at least hide them. So I can hide them behind sofas, behind cabinets, you know, just anywhere really to help minimize the clutter. 
The next tip, this I find very interesting because I wasn't aware of this one before. So since I think it's coming to two years now, since I've started keeping plants in my home, what I've realized is sometimes when they are dying or when they are changing seasons, plants, they can tend, yet their leaves can be yellowy and you know, can be dusty, especially in the summer, I prefer to put my plants outside and then I bring them in in the winter. And I have now realized that in as much as they are lovely and green and all that's beautiful about greenery in the home, if care is not given, they can actually be visually distracting. So this can be by the yellowing of the leaves. So take time to prune those take time to clean them like the one behind me i clean it from time to time with just a damp clean cloth and wipe it down and water the and water your plants yeah they will thank you for it and it is a really really great help in reducing visual clutter now this next tip is very interesting indeed it's to edit your space remember we are not throwing things away. We are just making sure our space looks comfortable and beautiful to our eyes. So by editing, I mean, if there are things that are four or five, maybe you don't need five of them. You know, editing is that act of going around your space, reducing things as much as you can to make your space look a lot better. I do this regularly as it is very easy to accumulate stuff. When it comes to shelves, you don't have to fill every single space. You can leave some spaces negative or open, even on windowsills. You don't have to have everything there. You can have a few things, and if you can organize them well, it will really reduce the visual clutter. The last tip I have for you is to have less if you can help it. Having less doesn't mean deprivation, although this can be a very difficult concept to wrap your head around, it doesn't mean deprivation when you have less. Less is more. So stay blessed and I'll see you in my next video.